What's up guys? It's time to predict another fight card. Here we have UFC Shanghai, which is the first UFC event ever in mainland China, so we're making history here. This is definitely not a casual fans card, and I don't really expect a lot of people to watch this, especially here in the States. And I'm not trying to be a downer here, but this card probably isn't going to be that good just based on the fact that it's on Fight Pass, it's at a whack time, and there's only four fights on the main card. So, But you never know. Some of these some of these underwhelming cards actually end up being the ones that deliver like crazy. So let, let's hope for that. Let's hope they put on a great show in China. But before I get into these predictions, like always, it's time to review my predictions from last night's card. And let's get into that right now. So someone in the comments on my last video actually suggested that I should start making two separate videos, one to review a previous card and one to predict the next card. So if you guys think that I should start splitting this up into two videos, just tell me in the comments. I'm interested to hear your feedback. I actually kind of like that idea. I'm not going to do that this time, however, because I really don't plan to talk about these fights that much. But in the future, if you guys want me to start making two videos instead, just let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to, happy to change that up for you guys. So, UFC Sydney started off amazingly, in my opinion. I'd say the prelims of UFC Sydney were probably in the top three best prelims I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, most of them ended in finishes. Everybody came to fight. Everybody came to fight for sure. I mean, they were so entertaining. I, and I was like, the main card is about to be amazing. Based off of these prelims, the main card is going to be great. And I think, like, Satan heard me say that or something because the main card ended up being... God, I, don't, I hate to say terrible because I feel kind of disrespectful to the fighters, but it just, the main card was not good at all. The judging was terrible, and I'll get, I'll get on that later. Like, everybody on social media was talking about how terrible the judging was, even the Australians on, like, Twitter and stuff, and I completely agree. The judging was horrible. I don't know if they had, like, trainee judges or whatever. Also, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure this ended up being the longest UFC event of all time. Like, every fight on the main card went to a decision, which in this case was not a good thing at all. But anyway, let's let's get on the first fight. Okay, so Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, kind of underwhelming. He couldn't finish a guy that took the fight on, like, a week's notice. And, I mean, I'm not trying to trash him. I'm just saying he said he was looking for the finish the whole time, and he couldn't get it. So, went to decision. Second fight ended up going exactly like I predicted so not really much to say about that third fight oh my god this frustrated me so much so jake matthews just came to wrestle hump bohan that's pretty much all he did the whole time bohan landed like four times as many strikes and the judges gave the decision to jake matthews which i did not agree with at all on twitter somebody said Jake won by way of being Australian, which I have to agree with. Jake did not win that fight at all. I, I, I feel disgraced that uh, Jake won that. It's terrible, terrible judging. Next up, Tim Means versus Bilal Muhammad. That was also some bad judging. I can kind of see a little bit more why they gave the decision to Bilal because he had that takedown on Tim Means. But I kind of feel like the judges had... They put Bilal's takedown over that huge knee that Tim Means landed. And other than that, the, the Bilal and Tim Means had like the same amount of strikes. I, I really think Tim won that fight. I really think so. Not trying to make excuses, just telling it like it is. And next up, we had the co-main event, Beck Rawlings versus Jesse Jess. That was Beck's fight to win. I mean, really, in the third round, she had Jessica hurt badly. She could have TKO'd her right there, but she decided to just pin her up against the against the fence and not do anything, so she lost the decision. She lost that fight fair and square, but she could have won it, which really, really frustrated me as a viewer. I know I'm not in the cage, but it's just, if you have somebody, if you hit somebody hard enough to where they're wobbled and stumbling around, why would you stop hitting them and just pin them up against the fence? Like, that doesn't score. That doesn't do anything but anyways on to the main event that was a weird fight that was a weird fight so i understand that any fighter can beat any fighter like by fluke or by lucky punch or whatever but fabricio really did not either either marcin is a lot better than i thought he was or fabricio was not doing good in that fight he he got hurt in the fifth round he won a landslide decision but he got hurt in the fifth round i don't know i don't know wasn't expecting that to go the distance but anyways, that was that was my quick little review of UFC Sydney, and now let's get into these UFC Shanghai predictions. For the first fight on the main card, we have Muslim, the King of Kung Fu Salikov versus Alex, the Dominican Nightmare Garcia. This is a weird fight because, well, first of all, Muslim is considered a Chinese fighter. He's the second ranked welterweight in China, but he's Russian, so I don't know 
I don't know the discrepancies in that situation. But to me, this seems like a fight that either guy could win. But you got to think this this is the first event in mainland China. Do you think they would put together a card where the Chinese fighters would lose? I mean, I'm not saying they they're they're like rigging it. I just mean like those old cards in Brazil. There were, there was cards in Brazil in like the early 2000s where it, it seems like almost every Brazilian on the card would win. And I just think the matchmakers are trying to set this up to where the Chinese fighters have a good chance of winning. This Muslim guy, he hasn't fought in the UFC before, but he he seems like he's a really good fighter. He he knocks out most of his opponents. I just, I really think this fight could go either way. But in my honest opinion, I think that if Muslim comes to fight, then he could easily win. So I'm, I'm going to put my faith in the underdog, and I'm going to say that Muslim wins by decision. Next up, we have a fight that I personally feel is going to be a little bit more one-sided and easier to predict. We have Wang Guan versus Alex Caceres. And although Wang Guan's record says he's 16-1, he's actually 19-1. And, and this guy is a heavy hitter for sure. Most of his wins come by KO, TKO. This guy, Wang, hasn't fought the same level of competition as Alex Caceres. But I honestly think that Wang is going to build his name off of beating Alex Caceres. I think that if it goes to decision, Wang is going to win. But this guy's such a heavy hitter that I really think he's going to finish Alex Caceres. So my prediction for this fight is that... Mr. Wang Guan finishes Alex Caceres by knockout in the third round. Next up for the co-main event, we have Li the Leech Jingliang versus Zack the Barbarian Otto. And here we have a much more well-rounded fighter in Li who has faced better competition. So almost by default and on paper, I think that this fight is going to go to Lee either by knockout or by decision. Lee's last fight was against Frank Camacho, who we all know has an iron chin and it went to decision. So if Zach doesn't come with that same type of chin power, then I do think it's going to end in a finish. But personally, I'm leaning more towards a decision. So my final prediction is Lee Jingliang by decision. And finally, as the cherry on top of a kind of weird card, we have a pretty weird main event in Michael Bisping versus Kelvin Gastelum. This is weird because Michael was the champion just a few short weeks ago, and he just fought a few short weeks ago. So he's coming in on short notice. He's replacing Anderson Silva, who just got busted for doing some type of steroids or performance-enhancing drugs or something. So Michael, who was once the champion, is coming in against Kelvin Gastelum, who really shouldn't even be in this weight class. Kelvin just lost to Chris, which really wasn't an impressive performance at all from Kelvin. We all know Michael has an endless gas tank, and I, I see Kelvin gassing out. I could see how some people might think that since Michael just got hurt a little bit in his last fight and got choked out, that he's not ready for this. It's too soon. But I see it more as he's he's it's not as bad that it's short notice because he's going to be conditioned. He, he had a long fight camp and then he's back in training. So I think Michael's going to be ready for this fight. I really, really don't see Kelvin beating him unless Kelvin just gets a lucky shot. I, I could The only possible way I could see Kelvin winning is if he just catches Michael and then finishes him. But if it goes past the first or second round, especially since this is a five-round fight, I just think it's going to go more and more towards Michael as the fight goes on. So I, I think Michael's going to win by decision. I really think Kelvin, the only reason he stayed in this weight class was so he could fight Anderson Silva. I think he would have beaten Anderson Silva, but this man needs to go back to welterweight. I know it's hard for him to make the weight, but he's just not going to have that same kind of success if he stays in middleweight. So my final prediction is Michael Bisping by decision. Just has too much cardio. I think he's just going to wear out Kelvin. So yeah, Michael by decision. That's going to be it for these predictions, guys. I'm really not sure how many of you guys are actually going to watch this fight or even care about it. But if you do, this video was for you. I hope you enjoyed the new audio quality because I finally got a mic and I'm not just talking into my computer. So I think the audio quality is a, a good significant amount better. So you guys can tell me how you feel about it in the comments. You know, in fact, tell me anything, any, any type of feedback. I'm happy to hear whether it's negative feedback or positive feedback. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And guys, don't forget to tell me if I should make two separate videos instead of having a review and predictions in the same video. Like if that's annoying for you guys, make sure to tell me if you want me to change it or if you don't want me to change it, tell me in the comments. Well, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. I'm going to keep making videos as long as you care about my opinions and care about what I have to say. 
And don't worry, next weekend the predictions will be a lot more interesting because we have UFC 218. So until then, see you later.